Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What movie blew your mind when you first saw it? The Matrix. Best inter ever. The first 5 to 10 minutes is basically perfect movie making. It is action packed and instantly grabs your attention. But it also does a great job of introducing characters and world building. Things like, Trinity easily takes out a room full of armed cops which shows her to be a total badass. And yet when the agents arrive, she is terrified and runs for her life. The viewer can't help but respect the agents if a badass like Trinity is afraid of them. We don't see Morpheus, but we hear him guiding Trinity and the viewer can tell he is a compassionate leader, mentor. It is revealed they are desperately looking for someone, Neo, and Trinity thinks it is worth risking her life to find him. As the chase is happening, we see shots of the gloomy world the movie takes place in. And we see more of Trinity's and the agent's incredible superpowers. The chase ends with Trinity barely escaping to the real world through a telephone. Revealing a fundamental aspect of how people interact with the Matrix. It is non-stop action that pulls you in and has you on the edge of your seat. But it also does an amazing job of setting up the world and the main characters. And it takes less than 10 minutes. Also, a great example of, show don't tell. Great write-up. I just want to make a small clarification. The chase ends with Trinity barely escaping to the real world through a telephone. Revealing a fundamental aspect of how people interact with the Matrix. It shows Trinity desperately trying to pick up a pay phone. Then get hit by a fucking truck. But when the agent investigates, the rubble of the phone booth is devoid of a body. And that's all we know. I remember seeing it in a theater when it came out. Matinee on a Wednesday afternoon but the theater was still a quarter full. Guy in front of me said, what in the fuck? During the bullet time scene. Sticks with me to this day. I don't know how to describe it, but maybe kind of jealous. Closing parenthesis, that he got to see it in its original form. By the time I watched The Matrix, even as a young teenager I'd seen that scene parodied, referenced dozens of times. Was still cool as fuck though. Jurassic Park. I loved how under wraps they kept the whole thing. You literally could not see what the dinosaurs looked like unless you paid for a ticket on release. I remember a photo of Steven Spielberg in the paper posing with one of the dinosaurs and they completely blacked out the dinosaur. You only saw a tail for a brief second in the commercials. And damn, when they show that first dinosaur and it rears up on its hind legs to get that high branch. I shrunk down in my seat a little. Had no idea what I was in for. The teaser trailer is somewhat terrifying and reveals almost nothing and it's amazing. HTTPS. U2.be slash Zephyinvex or Zero. I couldn't believe something like that was possible. The visuals I mean. Not the dinosaur cloning. The sound was pretty stellar too. That movie was a massive boost to the home surround sound market. You'd walk into any circuit city, etc. And for years that movie was pretty much on repeat in their home theater demo rooms. And the Jeff Goldblum. Life finds a way. It blows my mind that a movie like Jurassic Park can still look amazing. While a movie that came out six years later. The Phantom Menace. Looks absolutely terrible. The Prestige. You think you know what genre movie you're watching until you get to the end. Are you watching closely? Star Wars, 1977. I was nine years old. Never saw anything like it before. I was four. Afterwards I told my mom I could hear music in my head and asked her to put her ear to mine and listen to it herself. She asked me what kind of music and I replied, space music. Quote, my dad bought the soundtrack and had to teach me how to use the record player because I wanted to listen to it every chance I got. They started buying records with collections of classical music. The Reese's Grocery Store sold a different record of the Boston Philharmonic every month with different categories of music, overtures, symphonies, rhapsodies, etc. And I loved them all. Basically Star Wars is why I'm a musician today. People say Return of the Jedi is often their least favorite of the original three. But I was a kid in the theater and let me tell you the entire place lost their fucking minds when greater than Darth Vader threw the Emperor down that hole. Less than edit. I know it's a 40 years old movie. I put the spoiler alert there just in case there's some kid reading this that doesn't know the ending and was planning on watching. Want him to have the same awesome experience that I did. That was such a fantastic scene. Everyone thought Anakin was gone, replaced and dominated by evil Vader. Luke's mentors Obi-Wan and Yoda thought it. I thought it. All my friends thought it. The only solution was to kill Vader. But not Luke. He saw a sliver of good in him. He knew Anakin was still there. Luke accepted Anakin. And seeing his son in pain. Tortured by the Emperor. About to be killed by the Emperor. That was it. Anakin could take no more of that bullshit from the man that dominated and ruined his life. Anakin defended his son, throwing the Emperor down a hole to his death. Anakin loved his son and was proud of him and what he had accomplished. And just before his death Anakin wished Luke's sister well. I thought about putting spoiler tags on this. But the scene is 40 years old. Do I need spoiler tags? <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. My heart rate was sky high for the whole of the beach landing scene and I felt like I was there. 
with them after seeing Saving Private Ryan in a movie theater. I was in the lobby exiting and thinking it was one of the best movies I had ever seen in my life, but I honestly did not want to see it again, at least for a long time afterward. Even today, I've never made it through the entire movie in a single sitting. Still, one of the best movies I've ever seen, but man, it's intense. The scene with the frozen, coward in the hallway while his friend gets slowly stabbed to death. Fucked me up bad. Can't watch the movie again because of how nauseated that made me. And yet stupid Shakespeare in love won best picture face with symbols on mouth biggest travesty ever.